The Hamish and Andy Show podcast, powered by Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. Lads haven't even had a chance to talk about hats. At school, we've been learning a lot of pointless dribble. Finally, I get to learn about... Hats could be a wide brim. It's been a hard day being Kerry and Kennelly too, and thank God it's three o'clock and I can concentrate on one thing. Hats. Probably a crown for you, Kerry ann Good on you, Kerry. <sighs> Thank you, Hamish and Andy's happy hour. <laughs> oh. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Rich and Andy with you for the happy hour. One topic per day on this show, Ham. People can only get into this show by heading to hamishnandy.com forward slash topics um, and then giving us their correspondence. The topic today, Ando, hats. Yeah. Hats off, everyone, then hats back on. Thinking hats on, but also enjoyment hats on. Party hats? So hopefully you have a multi <laughs> hatable head. Um, Flat hats on, stackable hats can yep. be worn today. Many uh, hats. Hey, normally a little bit of an interest piece at the top of the show I like to give We'd like you. to start off with a fact. Uh, Joel Young, uh, happy to have you, Joel, emailed one in about hats. What is it? He said hats were invented in 1865. No, by, no, they weren't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Napoleon had one. And Jesus had a crown of thorns. It's sort of a hat. So, Joel, you're wrong. <laughs> but he was referring to the cowboy hat that was invented by John Battinson Spencer. But you're right, Robin Hood was running around with something in medieval times. What's uh, the oldest hat we can think of right now? Jesters had a hat. Wizards um, probably were around in dinosaur times. Stegosauruses had a sort of a hat. Sort mean? of a, the bone on their head was a bit of a... <laughs> no, rhinos don't have a hat because they got something I out of it. I think you could say rhinos have a nose hat. <laughs> <laughs> so much to get through. It'll be more informative than that. But straight after this, Ham. We pick the official hat of the happy hour. <laughs> and, uh, Ham, today the topic, as we go through all 27 trillion topics the world has, is hats. I mean, out of the huge hat that the topics are picked out of. Well, we should uh, add a tip of the hat to that hat, <laughs> if we could. <laughs> yeah. I mean, an integral part of the happy hour every single day is a very big hat. We have a supercomputer that has a robotic arm on it, um, that has a skin like covering, so to the passerby would seem like an arm. Normal arm taking a topic out of a big giant hat with every hat, every topic in the world in that hat. 27 trillion topics yeah. in the hat, and we'll try and do one a day for you, Monday to Friday. Mm. Weekends for free eternity. time. <laughs> free t- for eternity. Yeah. Here's a very serious issue and a very big moment for the happy hour too, Ando, mm. because the happy hour in this form, the show is in its infancy, mm-hmm. only a few weeks old. It was the business brunch for a while, but as the happy hour, mm. it's still finding its way. Yep. And one of the key things you need, whether you're a baby finding your way or a baby giraffe or anything in its infancy, <laughs> one of the key things you need to decide on is what's your official hat. <laughs> um, giraffes, for example, the yeah. Santa hats are their official hats. Of they don't wear them all the time. No. But you know it's their official hat. Of course. Like having a coat of arms. Yes. This is where people listening to the show right now, and it mm. is the people's show, it's your show. Mm. If you're listening to this, really, this is a huge moment for you because what we're doing is picking your official hat. Mm. So what I have before me is submissions. I have yes. the finalists. There was, I mean, there was something like 18,000 different hats submitted and uh, it's been whittled down by a panel of eight. Medieval and helmets. They've... You know, very quickly we were like, oh, that's impractical. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be heavy. Wizard production too costs. tall. Wizard hat, very too crumplable. No, almost no sun protection on a yeah. wizard's hat if yeah. you go the traditional one. No brim. Which so hat out. does double, obviously. Well, to let's be just a... wait and see what we've got. <laughs> <laughs> because maybe a witch's hat does make the final. Is it, is it, is it part of the last Well, three can or... I read you the finalists? Yeah, sure. There's actually four finalists. Great. First finalist is a cowboy hat. Mm-hmm. It writes, I'm fun, but I can be formal. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. We might need both of those things on the show. I make you look like a man or a woman. <laughs> so I think he's just trying to say they accentuate yes. your features. Um, but it's the best hat for frisbeeing. Yeah, that's true. And it's one of the classic three. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a beret probably is better for frisbeeing. Well, if you this get is a... what it wrote in okay, and sure. said. So that's what's, what's just... next up? Um, yes, yeah, so it's one of the classic three. So you go, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, yeah, you know, you are a classic hat. Bowler, yeah. fedora, cowboy are regarded as the classic three in the hat world. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Not necessarily in <that> order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know who put bowler in there. <laughs> um, sombrero. Wow, okay. It's an instant party. Yeah. Dress me up for a wedding, dress me down for a funeral <laughs> or a court appearance. So it's the hat <laughs> it's, it's the hat of many hats. <laughs> True. Um can be used for storage, yeah. I suppose around the brim. 
Um, in Mexico is the only time I'd wear a hat to a court appearance. <laughs> high level of sun protection. Yep. That's true. And the second best hat to frisbee with. Okay. I yeah, think sure. first best is, is cowboys. cowboys. Yeah, <laughs> it's sure. cowboy mention. Traffic witch's hat is number three. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fun yet painful. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's ever tried to wear a big witch's hat on your head. Yeah. It is painful. Perfect for parties. Difficult to wear in the car. It is. <laughs> it's too high. And uh, because yeah. I know a lot of people do listen to this show in the car, yeah. I would worry if our official hat for the show, yeah. you couldn't wear in a car. Yeah, that's true. The others you can. Cowboy hat, piece of cake, sombrero. <laughs> I often wear a sombrero in the car. I like to have the sunroof open, but a sombrero on <laughs> well, so you... I can protect myself. <laughs> cool. yep. um, option number four, real witch's hat. Can I... Not a traffic <laughs> witch's hat. Attention-seeking, but yeah. authoritative. Yep. Magic power is not included. Mm. Low sun protection. Worst hat for frisbeeing. I mean, from the ones presented, and this is obviously between the three of us, if you and I can't be unanimous, Jacqueline Jack will have the deciding vote. I'd like to submit, if we can. Count of three. Mm. One, One, two, two three. three. Sombrero. sombrero. Yeah. It's the official hat. That's the sombrero celebration music. I'd like to see what we had queued up if we had witches or traffic. <laughs> Just sirens. Well, that's great. The official <laughs> hat. Of the happy hour yep. is the sombrero from now and the forevermore. If you are a happy hour listener, can we get the Mexican embassy on? That'd be nice. I'm being okay. told no. Okay, <laughs> can we get Taco the- Bills? Can we get Taco Bell on? No, uh, no, no. We're gonna go to a song. Okay, so that's but fine. Just, that's an option. A list of people that might be excited to hear that the official hat of the happy hour is a sombrero. Obviously, go out, uh, get yourself a sombrero, wear it around, and you'll know if you see another person in the car next to you. Uh, or if you're on the train podcast. We haven't had a formal event yet, but when we do and we need to be in full dress, we'll be wearing a sombrero. Today, the topic, as we do one topic for an entire hour of the show, is hats, Ham. Mm. People have been corresponding, hamishnady.com forward slash topics, and we discovered that, I mean, the, the emails we should point out, 50% 50% go to you, 50% go to me. So we don't know each other's. We don't We don't have any idea what the other guy is getting sent. And it works well mm. because, I mean, a lot of emails come in, divide and conquer, try and get through them all. Mm. And a, a topic, a situation's really come up where we had a lot of people obviously writing and telling us about their favourite hats mm. and fondest hat memories. Yes. Now, not everyone can be that fortunate. No. And we need to pause for a moment to think about those in society and those in the community that aren't as hat fortunate Mm. as the rest of us. Mm. They are the people that cannot wear hats, usually because of the odd shape of their head. Yes. Whether they are pinheads or melon heads. (laughs) Yeah. Keep it together. I realised there was one of each. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, uh, Monique, uh, an email came uh, to to me. Pinhead or melon head? Uh, She was a melon head. She has the largest head circumference in her uni class. Um, And then we found that you had a, a pinhead. Oh, uh, I've got a pinhead that yeah, came through. Yeah, yeah, this is from Shelley. Shelley's a pinhead. Yeah. Um, she had to never fit her. Mm. She sent a picture of her with a top hat coming down all the way down to her chin. <laughs> so <laughs> her whole beautiful pinhead yeah. is stuck in the up in the attic of the hat. I can't even. I couldn't tell you what she looked like. We've got a way to make one of them happy today. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a new game. When there's a hat you must buy, but nothing's in your size. Hats annoying. Hats annoying. Hats annoying. Hats annoying. It is annoying for these people that they cannot buy hats, so we will solve that problem today. But just for one of them, due to budget restrictions, Monique joins us. She's our melon head. Monique, thank you very much for joining us, and excuse me for calling you a melon head. <laughs> that's all right. Just try- that's okay. Just trying to use the medical term. Uh, <laughs> Shelley, our gorgeous pinhead, joins us as well. How are you, Shelley? Yes, good, thank you. Now, Shelley, you wrote in your uh, in your correspondence to us, this is unbelievable, that you sometimes have to stand in the foreground and your partner stands in the background so your heads look the same size when you're taking photos. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem, really. He comes from a, a family of large-headed people and uh, my whole family's small. So well, I'm sure Monique has to do the opposite. I don't want to start playing favourites <laughs> too early here Just, because well, that, that is, is how hats that is, annoying work. That is good though, Shelley, that you're with a melon head because <laughs> yeah. your children will come out with <laughs> normal. You know, maybe well, no such thing as normal. We're all normal, um, but maybe more uh, stereotypically normal. 
<laughs> standard size. The way this works, We're girls, special. is you guys get uh, 30 seconds each to display the plight of the size of your heads, yep. whether it be melon head or a pin head. Hey, you and I at the end of that will decide, we'll decide which who, one we think's worse off. Who seems to have been struggling with the head, the size issue the most? And, and this is the exciting bit, guys. Yeah. The prize is for one of you, you'll get a tailor made hat. Yes. Your choice of hat. <laughs> your choice of hat. We'll get a hat made up to for fit your, your choice. Head. The custom other hat. We'll walk away with a happy hour coaster. You, you are the. I assume you guys, um, when the hat says one size fits all, you're the people that would. Be- beg to differ mm. on that statement, mm-hmm. but we'll make sure that this hat that we get you does fit one size, and that's your size. Starting with uh, Monique, our melon head, uh, you've got uh, 30 seconds, uh, if you want to use the whole thing, uh, to tell us the plight of having an unusually big head. Take it away, Monique. Okay, so I can never find a hat that absolutely fits me perfectly unless it's a beanie, which is absolutely Jeez. crazy because I can't use it during summertime. That's true. And Hot. I work in a call centre, so every single time I have to, uh, you know, adjust a headset, it's just... It, it's basically at the like the widest it can get, and even then it's very uncomfortable. That's yeah. unfair. Well, that's Sorry. lovely. Well done, Monique. <laughs> the time's up. Uh, you paint a good you, picture. You, you paint a, a very good picture. picture of what it's like dealing with that uh, okay. size. She- <laughs> Shelly, our pinhead, um, good luck. <laughs> uh, you have now uh, 20 to 30 seconds to uh, display your plight. Okay. Well, I mean, there's the issue of perspective shots with um, selfies. It's very important, my position and especially my head position. Mm. I've got to be careful what I'm holding in pictures too. Like if I've got a large object in my hand, like a hamburger or something, mm. It sometimes looks bigger than my head. Oh, um, besides not ever being able to fit a hat, sometimes I have to resort to uh, the kids' section for things like helmets and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, <no>. Safety um, <laughs> issue. <laughs> yeah. You know those tourist attractions where they have the cutout for your head? Oh, yeah. no. Never fit into those. Too much cap. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, it's, yeah, it doesn't even look realistic that you're a, you, a prawn you'd be or wearing, You'd be wearing that <laughs> Empire <laughs> State Building like a <laughs> halo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your well, time's up, Shelley. Well right, done. Great work, yes. Shelley. That's... See, in very interesting, taking us right into the world of pins versus melons. Yeah. <laughs> Aim, um, it's, you guys just, uh, we can both Look, put them on hold. They're and... both, I mean, both are facing some real hardships. Yeah. Monique with the headset, yeah. obviously yeah. stretching to fit a head. But, I mean, with Shelly, yeah. I feel like, it, I mean, if it's a safety issue yeah. that she's struggling to even find anything to adequately protect her head. Yeah, and, I, and what spoke to me was putting your head through those giant cardboard cutout things at certain sure. the, bad theme parks and that's something that we all should enjoy. Yeah, I'm not to say that Monique can get her head through the hole at all, but, <laughs> be able but to. she can bring it up. So guess what? <laughs> she Shelley... can get her face through, probably. <laughs> that's true. Shelly, you've won a hat of your choice. Custom, Custom hat, Shell. <laughs> what, type of hat, what type of hat are you going to get? Oh, gosh, you know, this is something I'll need to think about and think carefully about. Mm. Well, I've never had one before. Yeah, right. Never had a hat before, okay. <laughs> okay. But if you, I mean, just what's your instinct telling you? What sort of... Do you want a trucker that, hat? Do you I mean, want... sombreros are the official hat yeah. of the happy hour, but <laughs> don't let that sway you. Go somewhere, maybe a cowboy hat. Who knows? Okay, okay. Well, one of the classic three. We're going to give you three weeks to decide, (laughs) and uh, and then we'll get it made up. But Monique, you walk away with some happy hour coasters, and everyone's happy. And our hat makers (laughs) delighted because they're making a smaller hat from a cost perspective (laughs) than had the melon head one. (laughs) It's the happy hour with Hamish and Andy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, Ham, today the show's all about hats. Uh, One topic per day on this show, and. It got me thinking about the term hat trick. Yeah. Um, it's a hyphenated word. Uh, for people who don't know, it's used in a sporting term when someone gets three of something. Cricket, if you get three wickets within three deliveries or three balls, you get yeah. a hat trick. If you score three goals in a soccer match, you've got a hat trick. Yeah, it's very difficult to do usually. It's a freak circumstance. In other mm. sports where you're able to get you know, three... Three goals in basketball, for instance. Yeah, you're yeah. not running around giving you hat tricks for that. <laughs> no, no. You know, three steps in a row in a marathon. Yeah. I mean, come on, we're all doing that. <laughs> you're not getting a hat trick for that. Right. Hey, I wonder. I jumped where... three centimeters in the high jump. <laughs> Stop calling me. You're not getting a hat trick. <laughs> I wondered where this came from, so I looked it up. Is the it a Oracle... Michael Jackson reference? No. Because you know he did a lot of hat tricks. You know, he would roll the hat yep. and flip it. It's nothing to do with a trick uh, using a hat. That's what I thought. Maybe it was from a magician or something back in the day who did a trick that was so amazing. Uh, the next time someone was at a cricket match, they went, the last time I've been this impressed by something was that guy pulling a rabbit out of his hat yeah. who then disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Yes. It turns out it is cricket, though. 
It came about in 1858 when H.H. Stephenson did take three... <laughs> did There's take, a name you don't hear very often did anymore. H.H. Take, H. <laughs> did take, take three wickets in three balls. Yep. Right. What The reason why it's called a hat trick is what was customary at the time, because they weren't getting paid as professional players back Plus then, not. they would just kind of have their own so jobs and they rock up. Chimney and, sweep. Yeah. yeah. Run around. <laughs> they run around. Pick the Naval captain. Yeah. Uh, they, and then they run around on the weekend. Yeah. Silk um, trader. If something great happened, it was quite common for... A, a something to be passed around, a collection passed around. So, pass the hat around. So, well, not so necessarily a hat. Pass the boot around. Pass something around where people, supporters, would crowd, give money. Would give money, and then they'd award something to that person. They went. Jeez, and, you'd want to be playing at home, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's just scored a hundred against you guys. Can we have a bit of a donation? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> As it turned out, for H. H. Stephenson, uh, the money went round. Uh, someone ducked off and came back, and they'd purchased the hat for him. That was his present for with playing the, well. With the proceeds, he was given a hat. It was then referred so, to as a hat trick. I guess we are talking about an era where getting a hat was more of a big deal than it is today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it stinks of the only store near the cricket ground was a hat shop. Because well, if, if you did something so remarkable that yeah. we'd never seen it before and I ran off to get your gift and I came back with a hat, <laughs> maybe there's a part of you that would go... Wasn't would you that... like a, Would you like more time? Yeah, exactly. Would you well, like a day? Wasn't that remarkable? It made me think, <clears> Ham, that perhaps if something extraordinary happens, I mean, the hat for the happy hour is a sombrero. Oh, would how would we ever give away a happy hour sombrero? Would Someone have... would have to get a hat trick. Well, of yeah, something. Of something. <laughs> yeah. We do have gold coloured watches that we give out. Yeah. They're extremely rare. Yeah. We have five hundred coasters. Yeah. You'd probably get one of those yeah. if you tried. You get three of those. But we're not giving you a sombrero for three coasters. We couldn't give a sombrero. Would we give a sombrero out for three watches? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're ever giving one out there. <laughs> but that's a hat trick. Yeah, I know, but we I mean, if you get a watch, can you imagine if then someone did something so exemplary? There's yeah. only a hundred watches in yeah. existence. Yeah. If someone got a watch and then they did something else, they got another gold-coloured watch, yeah, and then kick. they're on a hat trick. <laughs> imagine how ex- how much they would try to do for the show. Mm. They would probably organise the Beatles to play for us or, or something. <laughs> or Adam Levine, if you listen. <laughs> would take either. You'd get a hat trick for that. TBC, that's how you get a sombrero. Very, very <laughs> limited. We have two to give away before the end of the decade. <laughs> Hello, podcaster. When you get a chance, jump into hamishandandy.com forward slash topics and send us an email. It's how we make this show. Ham, people get into this show by heading to hamishandandy.com, uh, heading to hamishandandy.com forward slash topics and selecting the topic of interest. Today, it's all about hats. And uh, we got a bit of international correspondence mm-hmm. from Happy Chappy Zynan. Mm-hmm. Uh, his father did something that my father is an expert at. His father found a hat. Table tennis? Oh, hat finding. Dad's other... One better than table tennis. Dad's other world championship level skill. Yeah. He found a hat. Now, uh, I believe we have Zynan on the phone. How are you, Zynan? I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, Yeah, really good. Now, congratulations on your dad finding the hat. Yeah, thanks. He pulled a real Noel Blake there. The real real (laughs) Noel Blake, yes. He did pull a real Noel Blake, Zynan. (laughs) Well, can you take us through uh, the events that led up to the hat being found? And feel free to include the style of hat too. Yeah, absolutely. He was uh, walking along the beach one time, bird watching, and he sees this waterlogged hat down in the water. Mm-hmm. At first thought it was a trash, and he kept walking them. He decided to go back for it, see what kind of condition it's in. Apparently, he has some sort of set standards for hats found in the ocean. Yep. Yep. So he climbed down through the rocks of the water's edge, fished out the hat, and took it home, dried it out, and now he wears it every day. Every day? What, what kind of hat yeah, is it? What, what type? Yeah, it's a green sun hat. It's one of those floppy ones with a brim all the way around the edge. Oh. And it's got this embroidered logo on the front of it. It says, Snorkel Bobs, Hawaii. <laughs> Snorkel Bobs, Hawaii. Is it possible? Kind of, it sounds like a Wally hat. Is it a... possible it's washed up from Hawaii to Alaska, from one rogue state of the U.S. to the other <laughs> non-mainland state? Yeah, that might give it a bit more glamour. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I've got a bit of a special treat for you, Zynan, because listening to the whole story on the other line was my father and king of found hats, Noel Blake. How are you, Dad? Oh, wow, I'm good, thanks, Ham. Thank you very much. Uh, Noel, uh, you've been brought in as an expert on hats, particularly found hats. You've heard the whole story from Alaska, from Zynan's mouth. How do you feel uh, and how do you rate that hat find? 
<laughs> well, up until the point where he dis decided that it might have washed from Hawaii, I thought it was pretty pedestrian and mundane. <laughs> if you can actually prove that it's floated across like a, you know, a letter in a bottle, yep. I'd say that's a terrific find. <laughs> nearly, nearly up there with my find of the police hat. Well, yeah. so it does. I mean, the police hat you found has been discussed on the show before. You found it. You wore it for a little while. Then you decided it was too much power for a civilian to have, and you handed it back in to the cops. So this doesn't knock the police hat off its perch. No, I don't think so either. I think, mm. and and let's face it, Ham. I think that the the dead possum hat that I found for you that you wore so happily mm. on your trip down to Tassie saved your life. That that hat, I think that's still pretty up there too. No, does it beat the uh, Hawaii Bob snorkeling adventure hat? Mm. I mean, they were found in almost identical situations. They I were fished know, out of the that's, ocean. That's a plain hat, isn't it? Really, that's well, not it's really international. A... The snorkel bob hat is international. Ah, yeah. Got to read that. And I have to admit that the hat that I found, the, pos the dead possum hat, it didn't have a cord on one side, so it was a bit, it wasn't totally usable. zynan has got that yeah. one. Oh, yeah. So we're saying it's somewhere in between a police hat and a washed-up possum hat. Yeah, it's in that league. Yeah. Absolutely, it's in that league. Well, Zynan, you're playing with the big boys now. Tell your dad. <laughs> Have it, have it up a bit. We're looking for some more hats. <laughs> yeah, you. keep looking. And, Dad, will you ever stop looking for hats? No, it's not that I'm looking for hats. It's just that they find me. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that, that's the skill. <laughs> Thank you. And that's why you're number one. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Noel. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, Zayden, for your international beers. You and I haven't had we a chance would, to catch we? up. No, yeah, exactly, Andy. We've got better things to do, which is two friends catching up. Exactly. And we should do that. Obviously, it's Friday today. We should do that over jazz. Hey, Ando. Yeah. I um, did something pretty bloody generous during the week. To who? To yourself? No, you... to, the, to the world. Yeah, why? Well, what'd you do? Just did a really nice thing. Really good thing. I donated to Wikipedia. You... I gave them money. So now I own... I own knowledge. <laughs> and knowledge is power. How do you give money to Wikipedia? No, you, you have to donate to them because they're a business. Have you not donated to Wikipedia? No. You bastard. <laughs> That's not on, mate. I um, do other charities. What? Cancer. Oh, well done. <laughs> no, it's fine. I hadn't done it either till last week. <laughs> now I've done it once. I'll never do it again. Hey, Ham. Yep. Watching the uh, golf uh, during the week, mm -hmm. and Ernie Els, South African golfer, is sponsored. Let me just look him up on the website I own, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, it's my computer's a bit slow, so you keep going. He's sponsored by Boeing. The planes. Yeah. And I did wake up today with a real hankering to buy a 747 jumbo jet. So it's worked. He's got gotcha. you. Do you want to go half? That's how it works. <laughs> no, I gave him my money to Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, hey, Ando. Mm -hmm. Down the track when you're married. Can I give you a bit of a married man's tip? Yeah, sure. When your wife starts a sentence uh, with the words, you know I love you, mm -hmm. it's not the end of the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tip. Hey, Ham. And uh, driving along the freeway yesterday, and a guy cut me off so bad that I had to go into the emergency lane, nearly hit the fence, nearly died. Well, it's an emergency, so you're allowed to use it. Yeah. So, just, I think you probably take me for granted having heard that, and there's maybe th something you might want to say, because it could happen that quickly that I'm gone, so if there's anything you have in mind? No, I thought, uh, I thought you were going to tell me what you left me and you will. <laughs> No, just if you want to say uh, something. No, no, nice. no. So that's why my head immediately went, what am I getting? Getting a painting. Of what? Us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ando, uh, I was going to tell you this anyway. Yeah. I did my will the other day, um, and I'm giving you two paintings. <laughs> what are you giving me again? You can't give me one back. I'll be already dead. <laughs> no, I'm doing two paintings tonight for you. <laughs> but I'll leave you. <laughs> I'm going to bury them. That's <laughs> all so I've got time for this happy hour. Thank you very much for being with us. What would you like the paintings of? I'll do a painting of you in a sombrero. Mm -hmm. So remember that I did the painting mm -hmm. on the day Can you not that we give, decided... You commission... Oh, no, they're doing, they're doing them. If you commission someone good at painting to do it, I think that's a great gift. Thank you. This is the fun of waiting me out to mm -hmm. see if, you, if I go before you, yeah. God forbid... Yeah. 
but if the unthinkable happens, <laughs> yeah. uh, the excitement that you can use to get you through the tragedy of my passing yeah. will be, I wonder if he did those paintings himself or yeah. if he got a good artist. And, and one of them is a picture I'm of you in a sombrero because we, today we decided that is the Happy Hours official hat. I would be so sad if you would ever pass away, him. Okay. Because I have to get those paintings. <laughs> Well, I'm those. getting them done. I would hate them so much. I'm getting them done that by makes me distraught. famed famed artist, <laughs> Ken Doan <laughs> no, and Reg Mombasa. <laughs> so I've got time for, we'll see you next week. If they don't get back to me, I'll do it myself. That was the Hamish and Andy Show podcast, powered by Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. <laughs>